What's up, everybody? This is Jordan Comstock, and you're watching The Best Practices Show. Hey guys, thanks for watching The Best Practices Show, where we take a look at the best business practices from the best dental practices all over the world. And if you're growing a fee-for-service practice, this is a non-negotiable. You do not want to miss this show. And today we're going to be talking about the eight reasons why your dental practice has to have subscription revenue with Jordan Comstock from BoomCloud. Now, I'm saying this because this is truly a non-negotiable. You have to have one of these in your dental practice. It's a no-brainer. We're going to talk about it. Uh, and the why behind it in a few seconds here. But a couple show notes. We are shooting this show live as we do all of them on Facebook. So if you're watching the show and you have a couple questions, add them to the feed and I'll dish them to Jordan while we have them on the show. Or if you're watching them later on and you still have questions, continue to add questions and you'll see Jordan's really good at social media. He'll get back to you because we want you to get the most out of this. On top of it, don't just watch these shows alone. If you're a dentist, you're watching this and you go, hey, this is a great idea. Share them with your team because they're going to need to know the why behind this before they start getting into the how. And today's a great example on that whole premise. Now, um, thank you again for all the suggestions for shows. We're lining them up and shooting them as best we can, as fast as we can. And all of uh, the shares, we are now up over 39,000 followers on Facebook. 150,000 of you have visited us in iTunes. And today, Jordan, this is show 200. 200. Yeah. In less than two years, man. So um, we're just having a blast doing this. So thanks for being on. Now, I know who you are. We've had you on the show before. <laughs> I enjoy you. I enjoy what you teach. Uh, uh, if somebody doesn't know who Jordan Comstock is or Boom Cloud <laughs> or an in-house membership benefits subscription program, take us through that. And then we're going to go into the why uh, yeah. on each one of these eight. Absolutely. So hello, everyone. I am Jordan Comstock. I am the founder and CEO of Boom Cloud. Uh, been in the industry for over, it's been close to over 15 years now, which is crazy. Uh, it seems like my entire family is in the dental industry. Uh, last week, I just spoke at a conference here in Utah, and my entire family attended because they're all in dentistry, Kirk. That's kind of awesome. Crazy. Yeah. 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 So from my wife to my mom to my brothers, we're all in dentistry. So uh, it's in our blood. <laughs> mm -hmm. So and I I, uh, I I used to manage a dental lab, my dad's dental lab. That's kind of how I got started in the industry. And while I was there, I, I I noticed that a lot of practices were trying to well, they were venting to us about dental insurance and what it does to the practice, right? And and uh, I decided to create something and do something about it, and I created. A little company called Boom Cloud that is a software company that allows practices to create, organize, and automate an in-house membership program to generate patient loyalty and uh, recurring revenue for the practice. So that's just a little snippet about me. <laughs> yeah, and we got on. We were talking before we went live, and yeah. your business is exploding, and it should yeah, be crazy. because this yeah. is one of the hottest topics in all of dentistry, especially yeah. on the business side of things. And there's so many reasons why, but this is not a new concept. This has been around for a while. It's but been around for a while, yeah. People are just starting to give better language to what this is and understanding it a little bit more, right? And yep. we're having more yeah. real-world examples of this. Exactly. And I think more and more patients are are coming with a mindset of, of, well, we're in the subscription economy, right? The Netflix economy is what they call it. So a lot of patients already are beginning to have that mindset when they're going to see the, the practices, right? But yeah, this is not an old business model. And I, I believe... Um, I mean, it, it's been around for a while. I remember my mom talking about her office when, you know, a long time ago, her first office she worked for. They they tried creating something, but there's also a lot more technology and, and, and systems out there to help organize it for practices. So that I think that's why one of the biggest reasons why it's kind of growing even more in the industry. Yeah, and I'm going to give a bigger reason why you have to watch the rest of the show. A couple yeah. things. Number one, here's a warning. Your team, if you haven't done this, is going to violently resist it right away. So <laughs> yeah. just get ready for that. Now we're going to help you see how this is beneficial to everybody, your patients, your team, um, your yeah. practice in just a second. So hold on tight. When you feel the resistance, don't give up. Number two, 
I want to introduce this too, Jordan, because you and I have talked to this. The number one reason why patients go to a dentist in the United States, you know what it is. It's the number one reason. Yeah, it, it's the, they think they have insurance. They need insurance to go to the, the practice. Yes. Right? They a, pay, perceive, a benefit mindset. They perceive they have a benefit, so they have to use it. That's the number one reason people go to the dentist. It's sad, but it's true. Very so true. what a great opportunity to use the number one reason people go to a dentist, but use it in a beneficial way for them, the practice, and their health. So yeah. take us take us. Take us through this, you know, Jordan, when it look, when you're talking about the eight reasons, what, yeah. take us through each one of them. Yeah. So the first reason that I like to talk about is uh, memberships or subscription revenue increases the value of your largest asset, right? Which is your business, your practice, right? And, and, and here's why. Um, I want everybody first. Can you see that? Yes. I, I, this book is, is an awesome book. This book is the one that inspired me to create boom cloud and to help practices uh, create this model it's called the automatic customer by john warlow um, he's a well recognized author and, and and business professional in the in the startup and entrepreneurial space um, but it's it's amazing it talks about the just creating a subscription business in any industry including dentistry right so um, when i talk about increasing the value of your largest asset when you have a revenue stream that is predictable and recurring that comes in every month or every year, well, that increases the value. Why? Because it is less risky to run for, for the practice, right? And it allows you to calculate funds a lot easier, right? Now, I just recently, um, I was talking, telling Kirk before the show, recently bought out some of my uh, partners in my business here at BoomCloud, and I did a valuation of the business. Most valuations, when, when you have a predictable recurring revenue stream, um, it, most, most of them value at two times to five times the annual recurring revenue, right? Which means you're getting a multiplied um, valuation. The typical practice, I believe, I was talking to a transition expert on our podcast the other day, um, it, they range from like 60 to 80% discounted the cash flow of the of the practice. So you're getting a, a discounted um, value of the practice. So that's one of the, the biggest reasons to, to generate a subscription type revenue in the business. So that instead of getting a discounted cash flow, you're getting a multiplied uh, cash flow of that business, of that revenue. Yeah, let me piggyback on that too, because some yeah. of you are watching and you're going to have to transition at some point and you're going to be based on this formula that you just mentioned, Jordan. And we're also, if I'm going to come in and value your practice, I'm going to be pulling charts, electronic ones to see yep. if these people are real, they're dead or they've moved. Absolutely. And subscription revenue doesn't lie because it's no. real accounted statistics. Now, I just love this and you and I have mentioned this before. <laughs> When you're talking about driving the valuation of the business, the richest man of all time, do you know who he is? And he was just named that two months ago? I have no idea, no. Jeff Bezos was oh, named Jeff. the yeah. <laughs> Jeff. richest man of all time. That makes sense. He's like the subscription king. <laughs> $151 billion. Now, he will tell you if you watch his, his speeches, it wasn't revenue. It was members he needed. So he went from 50 million members, I think, to 80 and then 90. He knew once he got the members, the valuation would drive up because you got theirs. Now, one other thing I want you to think about. You might be watching this as a dentist and go, I don't know. <laughs> if your business doesn't run with some type of membership, it's in trouble. Imagine a country club that didn't have a membership model and you only paid for golf whenever you want you whenever only paid you for dinner. it would they'd all go broke every yeah. one of them would go money. broke yeah so um money. and if you think about it it's easy for dentists to do because they their their business model has some type of come back and, and use our service model right like right. the recurring visit model right but often uh, times a practice will we all know we need to see the dentist every six months, right? Everyone mm -hmm. knows that, but do they do that? No, right? Why? Because we, we're, we're busy. And, and a lot of the times when you have a membership program or a subscription model where a patient's paying monthly or yearly to your practice, they've already paid for it. So they're more likely to go to your practice because they've got the skin in the game already versus calling up the practice when, whenever they want, right? Or whenever yes. they can. So that's kind of one of the biggest reasons is 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 because it, it does that to the patient's mindset as well. 
Yeah. So let's go to reason number two. Reason number two is increases lifetime value of a patient or builds a patient loyalty system in the practice, right? Um, there's a lot of dentists in, I'm in Utah. There's a lot of dentists here, right? Um, and if I wanted to, you know, pick and choose any dentist, I could, right? But I don't because I subscribe to my dentist, right? I pay them for the fees and, and f- for my cleanings and everything, the traditional, you know, benefits of a membership program, right? The same thing goes just in, just when you have a subscription business model, whether it's your practice or, or anywhere else, right? Let's, let's go back to Amazon since that, that's, that's typically that they're like the subscription or membership Kings, right? So, um, Amazon, I'm an Amazon prime member. I'm sure you are too, right? Mm-hmm. So, the other day I was in Best Buy looking for a TV and I found like the perfect TV, right? But then I remembered, I'm like, wait, I'm an Amazon Prime member and I, I don't want to fit this in my car, right? So I found the same TV on Amazon Prime and because I'm a member, I chose to buy it from Amazon while I was in Best Buy, right? So that's that's a good example of, of patient loyalty or customer loyalty, right? The same thing can happen to your your patient base because they're already subscribed to you. The, the, the next, the next you know, mailer they get for, for the free cleanings, they're not going to go to that because they've already subscribed. They've already made the investment to your practice, right? So increasing patient loyalty also increases the, the value of the practice, right? Because like you said, Kirk, when you do an evaluation of a practice, you want to see if those patients are dead, active, or, or whatever, right? Whatever they may be. Yeah. Um, and when they're actively paying, right, that in- helps increase the value of the practice and generates that patient loyalty that we all need in a practice. Yeah. Now, I don't have any data to support this, but I have three yeah. teenage daughters and <laughs> they are all Netflix subscribers. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I'm <laughs> guessing that their lifetime value is super crazy high as compared to downloading a movie once and watching it here or there. And as a matter of fact, I know it is because I see the charges keep happening over <laughs> and over again. Yeah. I also, the grocery store I go to, this is silly, but when I get $200 worth of groceries, I see it all go like this at the end. And then the woman folds up the receipt and gives it to me. And she goes, you saved $22 today. And I go, <laughs> but I said, I spent 220 to get the 22. Oh, wait, I just got my Nordstrom bucks too. Where are those? So I get Nordstrom bucks for like $40 and yeah. I'm like, well, I got to spend my Nordstrom bucks, but yep. I, I spent 2000 to get $40. You know what I mean? So, so yeah. they're, they're laughing behind the curtain at Nordstrom yeah. because they're like, oh my gosh, I sent him those $40 Nordstrom bucks and he just comes in here and he's like, I got to use this. So as silly as it sounds, yeah. Yeah. you're Absolutely. driving up the lifetime value. You can call it loyalty, whatever it is. I like yep. how you coined it subscription. It's just spot on. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I mean, I remember even just talking to like Costco members, right? They they pay their membership fee, yearly fee to Costco, but then they end up sp- spending more at Costco, right, than the membership fee. Uh, they Subscribers or members tend to spend more. And there's a stat there, Amazon, the, the, um, the Amazon Prime member, right, spends like tw- a little over $1,200 a year as – a normal like Amazon customer that's not a member, they spend only five hundred dollars a year, right? So wow. the cool thing about that that Amazon is is well, this was a market research company that that did this for Amazon, um, but we understand now that members typically pay more than than non-members, right? And that's where you know Jeff from Amazon, he's he's thinking, yeah, that's why he's one of the richest men in the world because he's created businesses with members, right? You got Audible that Amazon owns as well, that it's a subscription platform as well. Uh, as well as Amazon Prime, and they've got a few others as well. So uh, that's some cool stuff that we can do in dentistry as well. We can we can copy that model that's working so well in other industries uh, for dentistry. That's that's the cool thing about this, right? Absolutely. Okay. Should I move to the third one here? Well, let's go to number three. Uh, this is my favorite one here. It smooths out demand, right? Now, everyone knows, and I've seen this a lot on social media, that dentistry can have their feast and famine months, right? That We all have a month that we call September, right? Mm-hmm. Everyone calls in the industry. Right, so, right. Uh, it's the, and, and when I was the dental lab, right, we, we, we managed, uh, when I managed the dental lab, we would follow the ups and downs of, of dentistry, right? And it was insane, if you don't have a, a subscription model uh, in the business, it's insane. One month you do an awesome amount, like 
goal breaking right amount of revenue the next month is a different story right so we want to smooth out demand in the in the dental practice and how do you do that well you you grow your a membership program of patients that pay a monthly or yearly subscription to your practice right that's automatically coming in each month mm-hmm. right um, or each year depending on your plans that you create right um, that is it, that is amazing when I managed the dental lab it was very stressful to run right because it was so up and down all the time I manage Boom Cloud. We, Boom Cloud. Of course, I, I'm preaching to you know to, if I if I were preaching this, I wouldn't have this business model, right? Um, so, Boom Cloud is a subscription business. Running this business is way a lot more a lot more fun than than managing a feast and famine business, right? So, it smooths out demand for for your your patients and or for your practice, and then gives you that that cash flow that you need each month, right? If you have a thousand members paying thirty bucks a month, that's thirty thousand dollars a month in just subscription fees. Can that what can that do for you? Can it help you cover p- your payroll costs um, each month predictably and 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 stress free, right? So think of that when it comes to demand as well, because subscriptions are the powerhouse of, of smoothing out demand. Absolutely. And if we were if we were gra- you know drawing up a, a little chart on your revenue, you'd see the bottom section of it. Every time you add a subscriber, and this might be one of the benefits you're going to talk about here in a minute, you're adding a bigger base of revenue. So talk about 500 clients a month or patients a month paying $30 a month. That's 15,000. That covers a lot of your rent. It covers a lot of your supplies, but that's only the base of it. And it's really not the major benefit because what you're going to have on top of it is the discretionary income that comes up on top of the base revenue, which is so true. It's so true. So I love the smoothing out demand because you call a dentist in September. You can hear (laughs) it. They're breathing it. They're like, I hate this. Yeah. 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 So so exactly that, right? You get that subscription revenue coming in, smooths out the demand, and then you do, like I said, members buy more. You, we can see that from, through Amazon and through other industry uh, companies that have subscription revenue or membership programs in, you know, installed in their business. They just buy more because they're more invested, really, if you think about it, and they want to get those savings, right? I, let's say the patient pays $300 a year to your practice. They want to get that Three hundred dollars a year back in savings, right? And if you're giving ten to twenty percent discount, they can they they'll feel good about you know going to the practice, getting services, and and getting that that investment back, right? Is is how the patients think. So absolutely. Now we did get a question here. I got to dish it to you. Lori Owens asked Jordan, "Can you address yeah. the Hi, people?" Lori. She's awesome. Yeah, she can is. You, can you address the people that think their states will not allow this? Oh yeah, so there's a lot of there's well there's a lot of rumor in a lot of states, Lori. Uh, but there there are some state regulations. Most of them say that you can't um, call it dental insurance, which I would not <laughs> encourage. That I did speak to a practice the other day, Kirk, that was calling it their like doctor so and so's insurance plan. I quickly said, don't call that. We don't. You'll get in trouble, right? Um, there's also a law out there, and obviously I'm not an attorney, but I do have attorneys that I work with and I speak with on a regular basis on the regulations. Um, and every state is can be slightly different. A lot of them copy each other, is what I see out there. But um, a lot of them, there's a law that is that is growing across the United States called DPC or Direct Primary Care. And basically that allows practices to bypass any insurance regulation because this is not insurance and uh, there's laws out there that are kind of clarifying that for each state. So the practices don't have to work with insurance commissioners because if you ask me, they're kind of a pain in the butt. (laughs) What? (laughs) And yeah, I've called many of them. (laughs) And then, um, uh, and then uh, you get, you know, that some of the insurance commissioners that, that like insurance companies will spend tons of money lobbying to change regulations. Right. So that's a good thing. DPC is a good thing that's happening across the nation. And then um, what they need to have, uh, there's a few states that require the, the practice to track the the met the data, right? The how much monthly recurring revenue you're having, um, and, and then you have to track how many active patients. Most of the time, when I talk to a, a practice, they they don't know those stats. Some states require that you need to know those, um, and require you to report those. There's only a few like that, that, that require that. And then you need to have what they call a medical retainer agreement or, or a direct pr- primary care agreement with the, the patient in the practice that will allow the, the patient to, you, the patient signs when they signs that agreement, when they sign up, but that will also give the patient that communicate, that clear communication they need to say that it's not insurance and they need to find, um, 
you need to define the 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 benefits that you're offering, right? Um, right. If you're saying, you know, hey, we offer, you can get any type of X-ray. Well, then it needs to be any type of X-ray. It can't just be like one type. You need to be pretty clear on on your agreement there. But that's what I'd have to say there about about any state regulations. It's yeah. a lot of people are when I say regulations, a lot of people get a little bit scared on that. Don't be. It, it's it's just guidelines in your state and and to help protect both the practice and the patient. That's all they are. They're not laws that say you can't do this and you'll go to jail if you do. Right? I've never seen a, a certain law that does, says that. Right. Right. Um, right. so, now, let me introduce the easy button if you're if you're watching this. The yeah, easy yeah. button is you just press that little link that we put in here. It's called Bloom, boomcloudapps.com. <laughs> and Jordan works with practices in all 50 yeah. states and has a software that does this and trains you how to do it. So you can either do all this on your own or you can just press that little button right there. <laughs> it's and right that'll just, there. Okay. It'll just make your life so much easier. And you can go back and prep teeth. And while wow, somebody else... <laughs> Does it? So yeah. I'll just what say that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for <Cool>. that, Kirk. <laughs> hey, my pleasure, buddy. So yeah. cool. Okay. That's number four. So number four is is free market research. Now, what I mean by this is is marketing. You you got to have a relationship with with people to get like accurate market research. And the only way, one of the best ways to to build a relationship is ensure that patient is paying monthly or yearly to come into the practice where you can then talk to them, right? And understand what their mindset is in regards to dentistry and the services you provide, right? So free market research, that is one of my favorites being a marketer. I, we have subscribers to Boom Cloud, right? We're able to reach to those subscribers that have created a relationship with us and say, what do you think about this feature in Boom Cloud? Or so you, the same concept can be done uh, in in your dental practice and you can say what do you feel about this in our practice and and understand what the market would want or what the the patient mindset is right which i think is is a critical uh component of 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 your practice is understanding your your patient base right so free market research is is my number four one there love it absolutely love it what's number five so, uh, get number f- uh, number five is get paid automatically, right? The, uh, which is one of my favorites, right? A lot of practices out there will cr- try and create membership programs, Kirk, that are not automatically run, right? They they'll manually run the cards each month, or they'll they'll even do a yearly plan, but only charge like a one. They'll they'll just say this is just for this year, and they don't put them on any type of renewal type program or, re- or automatic uh, automated payment program, right? And and that needs to be done. That's what makes a subscription business a subscription business or a subscription revenue, right? You got to uh, make it automatically paid to the practice or it's not going to it's not going to be that business model that we're talking about here with subscriptions. So the cool thing about that is who doesn't I mean, Kirk, do you like to get paid automatically? I mean, I love doesn't? to get who doesn't like to get paid automatically? Yeah, who doesn't like to get yeah. paid automatically? <laughs> now let, let me just share because you're hit, you're blowing up my mind right now because <laughs> one of the things that we teach as coaches is if you're going to extend payment, which I'm not a fan of, don't do it every month. Do it weekly because it's smaller and it's more palatable and it's more regular for patients. So if you're withdrawing a certain amount from a patient on a big treatment plan, you're going to want to do that every Friday so the patient gets used to the stimulus. If it's only done once every two months, they're going to go, oh, that's a big deal. And I have the same thing. There are some services where I only pay once a quarter for it. And when it comes, I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot how big that is. But yeah. those monthly charges, they get under the radar, and then Barb, our CFO, is like, okay, you got recurring r- monthly charges everywhere for these little amounts. But yeah, they, yeah. And they just sneak under the radar, and I see them all the time. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's valuable. So <laughs> keep in mind the regularity of what you're talking about when you're making consistent cash flow. It's better to do it in small, little, consistent chunks. I don't know. It's almost like Pavlovian or build some type of – a. It a is every path pathway for me that oh yeah there it is oh yeah there it is oh yeah there it is instead yep. of once a year going oh man another seven hundred dollars for this for yeah. a whole year type of a thing I I agree hundred percent and there are there are those practices that would prefer like having a yearly plan over a monthly uh, but but they both obviously have their pros and cons monthly I'm a, I'm a big fan of monthly because of what exactly you said there right it's it's small it's under the radar type payments which those are an awesome way to just keep going right instead of saying hey i'm going to charge you you and your family you know 600 bucks uh at one time at the end of the year right during christmas time like nobody wants that 
uh, monthly payments are are a lot more. I call them like the lower barrier to entry, right? If right. if you if you have a monthly membership program and a yearly membership program, most everyone's going to pick the the monthly program, right? Because it is convenient. It's under the radar, and it is a lower barrier to entry to your practice. So I, I recommend doing monthlies. Obviously, yearlies are good too. <laughs> I absolutely love it. So, yeah. what's, the, what's number six? So number six are uh, is, let's see, make your patients sticky, right? Now, what do I mean by this? And this kind of ties into um, the, the increasing the value of your of your practice, right? Again, if, a, if you're selling your practice one day, um, the the buyer is going to look to see how regular those patients are coming in, right? So and, and it does have have something to do with patient loyalty too. But you want to see some some regular patients coming into the practice, right? So that's what I mean by sticky. And it also keeps them sticky because well, if they sign a year agreement to sign up for the membership program, they're not going to they they can't cancel, right? They've got to stick with your your practice, and then it auto renews each year, right? So you want it sticky. Right. Yeah. And again, well, it, it, it's, it's, you're automatically making it sticky because it's a benefits plan where I can only go to yeah. one dentist. One I dentist instead of, instead I of like the go to a community of them. Yeah. Right? Like the PPOs, right? You're signed up with PPOs and that patient can go to a community and get the same discounts. Right. right. But when you're, when you're, when you're making it, so it's just your practice or your group of practices. If you have a couple of practices, right. like that's going to make the patient more sticky to your, your practice. Right? I know just, you're the works. expert, but I'm like piggybacking on everything. Go ahead, saying. man. Go ahead. <laughs> also too, a lot of dentists, if you're watching this, you're trying to find out how you can create, you can differentiate yourself from all of the other dentists. This is truly an opportunity where you could create yourself, put yourself in a category of one, because as many of times we've talked about this, Jordan, I do this in lectures every Friday. I'll go, who's got one? A few hands go up, not half the room. Yeah. Uh, if, if a quarter of the room went up, I would be shocked, but it's usually 10% of the room will go, I've got one, I've had it for years, I would never do without it. So you're also, when you talk about sticky, you're putting yourself in a category of one or very few that do that do this. Yeah, well, most practices will do the like the 10% cash discount, which right. drives me nuts because it only incentivizes the, the, the patient to come in that time, right? We, we, you need to have it come be a recurring or a predictable discount, if you will, right? When the patient comes in. And so I'm not a big fan of like the 10% discount. Ca like if the patient comes in to pay cash, they just give them a 10% discount. Why don't you say to that patient, why don't you, you should subscribe to our program, program because you can get all these preventative care benefits. Plus you'll get a little bit more discount, um, when you subscribe or when you're a loyal patient of ours, you know, uh, I just, yeah, the, you want that stickiness and you want that reoccurring patient visit. That's the, that's the whole business model of dentistry anyways, right? Yeah. Wait, I'll, I'll piggyback on that one more second. There's yeah. a young dentist in Kansas and he told me how he presented. So if a patient comes in with a tiny little broken cusp, yeah. he'll go, hey, look, I'll fix this and it's free today if you sign up for our membership program. Now I could charge for that, but it's, it's like I'm going to do a simple little thing really fast and I'm retaining a patient for oh, years yeah. and years. No charge today if you sign up for our membership program. It's 30 bucks a month, blah, blah, blah. Boom. You get this, you get this, you get this. He goes, no brainer. So yeah. something it to think about. It is a no brainer. About. Yeah, and, you, and, and practices need to make the plan a no brainer. Like that, That's a great example of doing that, right? When when you offer some a little bit of value for, for the patients that sign up for the program like that, that like, oh, it's not free. It's, it's free today and I can just subscribe. Well, they're really still paying you, right? But that that particular yeah. service is is free, and then you know they're going to come back more because my what are we now, we're on number seven now. My seventh one is subscribers buy more, right? Wait, uh, we've yeah we've mentioned that, so that's exactly what we're going right there, Kirk. <laughs> yeah, what yeah. is it? Do you know the Costco number? I forgot. We had Chris Phelps on, who's a mutual friend of ours. Yeah, yeah, and he said. Costco, when they started really getting into us, it, it was like, I can't remember the number. I'm going to misquote it, but it, it was more than 300%. Uh -huh. People that were members spent 300% more in an environment like that. Members always spend yeah. more. They always spend more. It's because the, it's that investment mindset where they invest the whatever three hundred dollars a year or whatever it is to the practice, you know, out there. They invest that and they want to get it back in savings, right? Uh, my wife does the same thing when she goes to Costco, right? We pay the membership and then she's like, "I got to get my savings, right?" And then we end up spending way more than if if obviously Costco doesn't allow non-members. I think, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, see, they got me. Yeah. They got me hooked. And. Um, if if I were a non-member of Costco, I would just go occasionally, 
right? right? But since we are members, I go pretty regularly and we buy more because we got to get those savings, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's the seventh one there. Subscribers buy more. So keep that in mind because your patients will buy more. Dr. Phelps tells a story where um, there was a patient that came into his office and because they saw his like membership program when he was driving down the street or something, he was advertising it. And the patient came in and said, Hey, do I, uh, if I sign up for this membership program today, could I get any, like any discount from the service I need? Cause the patient knew he needed some work done. And Dr. Phelps said, yeah, you can, you can get that discount. And the patient ended up buying, I don't know how many crowns, but he, he had, he, he had to get like three or four crowns and he bought more because he felt like he was getting the savings through the membership program while the practice down the street from him, right? He, he canceled his appointment because, well, he felt like he was getting a better deal becoming a member of that practice and the discounts he was receiving versus the other practice that was maybe doing a 10% one, one time cash discount. Right. Yeah. Totally agree. Now let me proactively remove some resistance that somebody might have watching this right now. Cause one of your <laughs> yes. fears is, well, Jordan, I hear what you're saying, but you're saying give a, you know, 10 to 20% discount on some of yeah. the advanced restorative procedures, which is absolutely true. Now you're going to decide yeah. what level that is, but I don't like the word discount. I like the word savings. You know, savings is good, sa yeah. Savings is better than discount. The second thing that you're going yeah, to do I agree. that's critical to what Jordan teaches and everybody else is you're going to do what's called a fee adjustment at the end of the year. You're going to look at what you gave away. And like every business, you're going to go, wow, that's what we gave away. So we're going to adjust on the other side. The beautiful thing is you make the decision on your adjustments. The yeah. insurance companies <laughs> don't. You can yeah. say, well, I gave away $100,000 to get a million. Well, that's a no brainer. What do we yeah. do to adjust our, now this is a terrible cliche. It's terrible, but I heard a dentist say it and please don't shoot the messenger. He said, you got to think <laughs> like this, but it's terrible. So I'm telling you, I can give you a 50% discount, but I'm going to have to charge you twice as much. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like that's terrible. But when he said yeah. that, I was like, oh, you're talking about a fee adjustment. You're basically yeah. going to adjust what you give away the next year when it comes to restorative procedures. And you're going to see it's not that much. You're yeah. basically going to raise your fees by 10%, which is if you're charging a thousand dollars a unit, you're going to go to 1100 a unit. Does that make sense? Yeah. So don't, don't let the roadblocks get in your way and say, oh, I'm not giving that away. Yeah. You're silly. And everybody wants a deal, no matter how good you are. No matter what, yeah. wants a deal. Well, even if you're like, if, if even if you're a fee for service practice where you don't work with any insurance, right? Um, it, a membership program is definitely beneficial for you. It's easier for you because you don't have to work with the insurance that they're contracts and their terms and agreements there in the contracts. But um, it, it's easier for those practices too because, well, who doesn't want patient loyalty, patient stickiness, predictable recurring revenue? Sometimes I'll, when I'm talking to a a, a fee for service practice, they kind of do have some pushback because they're like, well, I don't want to discount my my existing patients. I'm like, well, that's just like one year after that, it, you're creating a, a, a predictable recurring revenue cycle for your practice. Right. And then you're, you're allowing members to buy, purchase more services from your practice. And then you're, they're becoming sticky and you're increasing the value of your practice because of that predictable recurring revenue. So what, what's the holdup? Right. <laughs> right. You know, the so, other, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the other thing, too, for those of you that have you know, done any work with Frank Spear, he talks about flexible and inflexible fees. You're making adjustments at the end of the year on flexible fees, which are fees that patients pay not regularly. Like people aren't coming in every quarter and getting a crown to going, get a crown. oh, yeah. they're paying the, you know, the cleaning fees, the regular fees. And when you make adjustments to that, it's inflexible. They're like, oh, you raised your adult profi fee from $75 to 78. What, did you get a boat? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. When they pay $1,000 for a crown and then two years later pay it, 1100 for a credit. They don't often remember the frequency of the payments is farther apart. So there's yeah. more flexibility in that when you make adjustments on the back end. So I hope, absolutely. I hope that makes some, some sense in there. Yeah, it does. It, it absolutely makes some sense. So I do agree with that. And then my eighth one here, Kirk, is recession proof your business. We've I, I would I would imagine we've all been through the latest re recession, right? It sucked, <laughs> right? It was horrible, uh, especially managing. At the time, I was managing my dad's business, wh which was a feast and famine, cash flow cycle type business, right? 
uh, thankfully, they're doing amazing today. But at the time, that was really, really challenging, right? It was hard to get money in. It was hard to predict and make that budget, right? So when you do have, you know, 500,000 or more patients paying you a, a small amount each month or, or each year, right, you're you're bound to get through those those hard times because they're, they're definitely going to happen again, right? It's not like it's going to happen once in our lifetime. It's going to happen multiple times. So recession-proof your business, right? So the steady flow of predictable recur- recurring revenue will help your practice get through any hard time, whether it's whether it's a recession or even even just a temporarily setback, you know, that your practice is going through. If you build up your patient base enough to where there's a, a good amount of subscribers paying for your 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 membership program, you're going to recession proof or or setback proof your 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 practice. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll just add it like we've already said, this is, you know, sometimes as a dentist, you feel overwhelmed that you have to do all this. This is something your yeah. team can do every day, all the time. They can do yeah. it in hygiene. You put your team to work on this. First of all, like I said, they're going to resist it. But once they get it, they're going to be like, this is a no brainer. I sold four today. You can start to keep track of this in your morning huddles and go, hey, I sold one yes. yesterday. I sold two and make it a little game where if somebody sells 10 in a month, Hey, I'll send you to dinner with your spouse. Yeah, that's because that's fantastic. Make a little game out of it, you know. Yeah, and you have to. If, if for those of you practice owners listening, you know, you have to incentivize your your people, right? Your team. They're they're not just going to do it because they love you, right? right. <laughs> they're going to do it because they they want they need some incentive, right? Everyone works that way. I work that way. My team here works that way. Uh, I, I've not yet met a person that will just do something out of the kindness of their heart. Well, maybe. 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 Maybe you, maybe you work. You're, you're pretty kind. Oh, I, no, <laughs> um, I don't worry. I'm getting a lot out of this. I mean, I get the, I get the world's best experts in the show. It's I get to take CE for my job. Like, how great is that, you know? Yeah. So um, I, I do want to kind of shift gears now that we've kind of went through those uh, those eight reasons, right? Um, if we have some time. We, sure. we do have – you you mentioned that people do have pushback, right? The team members do. So let's talk about the benefits of 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 your team when you create a membership program and the benefits of the patients, right? So the benefits, if you're a team member listening, the benefits of managing and growing a membership program are, are, are going to be a few things here. One is you're not going to work with those awesome PPOs anymore, right? You're going to reduce dependence on PPOs, right? That That's natural. That happens, right? And I know because my mom's an office manager, how fun those PPOs are to work with, right? Yeah. And they're getting funner, which yeah. is not a word. They're, no, it's not, but it makes sense. <laughs> right. We just did a, a web session with Sandy Hudson and she started explaining the nuances of what are called shared agreements, which means the big insurance companies are doing what's called shared agreements, yeah. which means they're sharing their agreements across patients, which is lowering what? Uh, Your uh, reimbursement. Your like, reimbursement. And it's building a bigger machine, which you're not going to be able to fight. Now they don't have billion dollar attorneys; they have trillion dollar attorneys working. Yeah, it's, so it's you're a not nightmare. Going to win. It's a nightmare. So reducing dependence on PPOs for you front office managers and team members, like that's a huge benefit. Not having to work with all that red tape. I hate red tape, and I'm sure you do too. So that's a huge benefit. And then. Obviously, when you get to your membership program to a a certain level, like I said, it does smooth out demands, which which does stabilize your job, right? Uh, which is a huge benefit. And then, for the patient side, it makes the patient happy. Patients, right. I'm sure you can ask all your patients what their feelings are about their PPO or their insurance, right? That their insurance plan. They're not going to understand what their plan provides them fully. And it's going to cause confusion and and sometimes even anger, right, with your patients. Um, so that's a good thing for your patients when they don't have to deal with that. They pay the practice directly and they work with the pa- practice directly. So patients want more of that, right? As a patient, I want to go to the practice and have a hometown feel. I want to know that patient knows me and and is he's got my back is going to take care of me correctly, right? And not that not have some third party come and dictate, you know, my treatment, what I can get done, right? So more and more patients have that mindset and and, and that's a good thing when you have a membership program, right? And then they're able to my mom, so my mom's an office manager. They recently created a membership program, and she had a patient in tears the other day because they've been str- their family has been stressed about finding some type of way to provide a, a quality care of, of, of for the children. Right? She she works at a pediatric office, and 
and, and the the mom was just in tears because she signed up for the membership program and finally felt like she could give her family what they needed with 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 their 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 oral care, right? So I think that's a that's a huge benefit when patients feel like they can go directly to the practice and not have to worry about working with all the the complicated third parties out there. So, yeah, no, uh, we'll go even a, a layer deeper. Remember, yeah. people go to the dentist because they perceive a benefit. And, a lot of them don't go because it's going to be too expensive to take my family of five or whatever. But let's go down to the details. When you start creating an in-house members program, you know, benefit program, yeah. patients are going to go, okay, well, wait a minute. This is cheaper than what I pay <laughs> <laughs> for my my it, delta it, it, at the company I work for, and yeah. you're going to go. It's a no brainer. Yeah, and then that also opens the door for you to go. What company do you work for? And they go. I work yeah. for X Y Z company. If and I were, if I was a dentist, I would be visiting one of those All companies a week. Going, who's in charge of X Y Z? Uh, uh, the dental plan. I'll save you millions over the next yeah. two years. You'll get an appointment with anybody. Yeah, well, that's one of my biggest things that I think practice should start doing more and more. A lot of them will start just, you know, marketing to just their local neighborhoods and things like that. But local, uh, marketing to your local small businesses can be the best thing for your practice because you sell to one person and you may get 50 or 25 or whatever the number of employees they may have, right? And and that's a great way. And and keep in mind that, that biz- I'm a business owner. Kirk, you're a business owner. We're looking for ways to always give benefits to our, our team members here that work so hard for us, right? So yeah. if, if if uh, if I were you know a local business owner and somebody came to me and said, hey, I noticed you have you know X amount of employees and team members that you know that you guys have a dental you, dental insurance that you provide for them, maybe they do, maybe they don't, but then you can compare you know what they're paying for the dental insurance and then switch make a switch, right? So uh, yeah. I, I love it, and here <laughs> I'm at. I just thought of this. So when you go into the the XYZ company and get to yeah. the HR person, go. See, Mr. XYZ, now you're not going to give your employees a list. You're going to give them a relationship. Yes, I love that. Drop the mic. Drop the mic. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, that's exactly what they want. That's exactly what patients want. They don't want to go to a practice and just have some random doctor that they don't know work on their teeth, right? That's It's a relationship business, right? So keep that in mind, too, that patients don't just want to go. I mean, I think that's where the medical industry is kind of – gone off path right is because you go to the any medical here in utah we've got intermountain Healthcare, which is pretty much a monopoly here and you go to any practice there and you get assigned a random doctor that you have no relationship with right and they just kind of herd you in through cat like cattle right patients don't want to fill that that's that's not what industry we're in that's not what type of business model you as a practice have you you need to create a relationship with with your patients and then obviously by having a, a subscription a membership program you're going to be able to keep that patient coming in and develop that relationship to, uh, to your practice so those are my thoughts there Kurt. Buddy, that's awesome <laughs> do you have any final thoughts on you know the reasons why people should do this or any closing thoughts before we say goodbye to everybody else yeah. So my final thoughts are, you know, generate that predict- predictable recurring revenue. It's a new, it's it's a semi new business model in dentistry, and it it's it's why it's why honestly, the dental insurance companies have the biggest buildings in the in your city in your city, right? Because they have a ton of predictable recurring revenue coming in, and they're able to you know buy those big buildings, right? That's a benefit. Obviously, it's, I'm not all about the money. Um, it, it, that's obviously the good the benefit of having a subscription model, right? But uh, it, it, it's all about giving the patients a good experience and, and giving the patients something that, that's going to benefit them, right? That's actually going to benefit them versus, you know, their PPO plan that semi benefits them, right? Um, so that, that, those are my final thoughts. I would say if, if any of your practices out there are interested, I've got, I've written a book here. It, it's called, uh, how to create and grow an in-house membership program for your dental practice. Uh, you can get it on our website, boomcloudapps.com forward slash book. And then for those of you that may have researched, you know, what we do in the industry and, and kind of want to move forward and, and seeing kind of how our software works, you can go to our, our website, boomcloudapps.com, and schedule a demo right there where our team's calendar is on the website so you can schedule a, a live demo to see what our software does and how it can help your practice automate a, a membership program. 
It's awesome. Get that subscription revenue coming in, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Don't even think about it if you're sitting there going, I should, maybe I shouldn't, just do it. I'm just yeah. telling you, you'll you'll look back on a career and you'll go, that's one of the best things I ever did. So just do it. So um, thank you, Jordan, for being on. You know, we're always going to have you back and discuss another component of this because, again, yeah. it's such a popular component in dentistry. Thank you guys for watching. And by the way, this is a very important day in the history of this country. It's a day where we get to choose. It's Tuesday, November 6th. I don't care what your political preference is. It's why this country was founded on such great principles. Go out and pick whatever it is. Just exercise your ability to vote. And uh, we look forward to seeing you guys next time. So Jordan, stick around while we say goodbye to everybody else. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed today, which I know you did, just do us a favor, hit the share button, share with your friends. Keep sending us suggestions for shows, things that you would love to hear from Jordan or any other guests that we have on. We'll put them together and see if we can't make that happen. And until we see you next time, keep watching the best practices show. You guys have a great rest of your day.